Uh, Sheikh Mohammed Al Nakhvi. We all are here, and we have around thirty brothers yes, here. Shama, brother, how are you? Hope you're doing well, Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we are doing well, and uh, we are waiting for your speech. Jazakallah khair for joining today, and uh, we can have thirty minutes speech, and maybe twenty minutes. And uh, if you have any questions from brothers, you can make a Q and A for uh, uh, five to ten minutes, Inshallah. Insha'Allah, Insha'Allah. So, shall we start, Insha'Allah? Okay, please. Jazakallah khair. Okay. Salam. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Masha'Allah, Masha'Allah. First of all, it's nice to to be uh, in in Japan uh, while I'm sitting in Kuwait and and meeting my uh, brothers uh, there. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala reward you all for your time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward uh, Brother Harun, uh, Dr. Abdullah, and, and all the brothers, mashallah, working uh, for, for uh, you know, uh, the betterment, for the community, for the society. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless you all. طيب. So inshallah ta'ala, we will start. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanim ila yawm al-deen. All praise is due to Allah. We seek his help, we seek his forgiveness. And we send salutation upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And all those who follow his footsteps till the day of judgment. Of course, uh, first of all, I would like to say Jazakum Allah Khair for giving me this opportunity to come and join my brothers uh, in, in, in Japan. And uh, it's a privilege and it's uh, an honor to be amongst uh, my brothers in, in Japan. And mashallah, uh, I feel like uh, I'm, I'm uh, with my brothers at home. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he united us in this wonderful place uh, virtually and and uh, gave us the ability to see one another and to listen to one another i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us to make us again meet and reunite in jannah al firdaus amin ya rabbil alamin so basically uh, my uh, brothers uh, i don't know if they are sisters but brothers and sisters uh, as we know that Basically, we will talk about today about something that is very important, and the topic is the miracle of uh, the sadaqah, the, the miracles of the, the charity. And sometimes, subhanAllah, you don't know uh, what this uh, something little small that you offer, uh, what is the outcome and return of it. And obviously, when we say sadaqah, when we say charity, be, be informed here and, and know my brothers and sisters, that when we say charity is not only money, when we say charity is not only giving a dollar and yen and dinar and dirham and riyal and whatsoever, charity, even the Prophet ﷺ says, Al-Kalima Tayyiba Sadaqah, one good word that you will say, it's a charity. Tabassumuka fi wajhi akhika sadaqah, smiling on your brother's face is a sadaqah. I can see, mashallah, brother Harun is posting or, or keeping one nice picture of him. He is smiling. Even though he is there, he is not there. Maybe he is, you know, busy or he is sleeping. But just looking at his picture and he is smiling on us, he is getting reward. I can see my brothers, mashallah, all of them, they are, you know, sitting there. Obviously, you are having the mask. I cannot see you. But I'm sure that you are smiling as well. And if you are smiling, you are getting the sadaqah. Anyways, so... Sadaqah is not only when we come and, 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 and give money or, or give food or something like that. Your good action, uh, they are all sadaqah. Your a smile is a sadaqah and, and a good word is a sadaqah. So uh, this is something very deep and big. And, and this is what we have to know. Alhamdulillah, by default, we are, you know, uh, our teachings telling us to, to smile and say the good words. And, and mashallah, yani, a, a big number of Muslims around the world, they are following the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, of smiling and saying the good words. But there are millions and millions and, and billions, you know, they are not smiling. I was just, uh, uh, some time ago, was was uh, going through some one of the videos of, of a person who suggested me to watch. So so uh, 
he was telling me about one of the countries around you, <laughs> better not to mention the country. So he said that these people, they don't smile. For them, smiling is something strange. I will not smile at your face if you are a stranger. Because it's for them, of course, now this is their explanation, the community, the society, the country. This is what they are saying, that why should I smile at you if you are passing by and you are walking? You are a stranger and you are not deserve to see my sm uh, smile that I'm smiling to you. This is their, their uh, understanding. But our dean, no. Our dean is saying you are just smiling and moving or posting or putting a picture that is, you know, show your smiley face. This is an act of reward. This is an act that you will get the sadaqa. You know, you are giving sadaqa. But inshallah ta'ala, as I told you, the topic is wider and wider, and we will go through it inshallah ta'ala in, in the uh, upcoming things, ayat and ayat, with the hadith, with the stories that inshallah ta'ala I will share with my dear brothers. So the first of all, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, if you look into the Quran, my brothers and sisters, you will find lots of, lots of ayat in the Quran. It talks about the sadaqah. So for example, in Surah At-Tawbah, chapter number nine, verse number 104, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying what? أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ يَقْبَلُ التَّوْبَةَ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ وَيَأْخُذُ الصَّدَقَاتِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Which means, أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا Don't they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the only one who accepts the repentance, the tawbah from his servants. Subhanallah. Imagine only the first beginning of the ayah, Allah is talking about the sinners. And we all commit sins. And there are some people who are يعني, going deeper and deeper in sins. And Allah here saying, ibadihi. Allah accept the tawbah from his own slaves. He didn't mention and saying, the bad people, the sinners, the wrongdoers. No, 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 no. Even we make mistakes and those who are involved into sins and mistakes, when they repent, they will find Allah not only accepting them, but Allah is still considering them that they are their servants. They are the people who are very close to Allah Almighty. And this is from the ayah. Then Allah Almighty says, وَيَأْخُذُ الصَّدَقَاتِ and From the beginning of the ayah, don't they know that Allah Almighty accept the tawbah, accept the repentance from everyone, from his servants, and he receives the charity. And when Allah huwa tawab, indeed Allah is the one who accepts the repentance, Ar-Rahim, the most merciful, Allah Almighty. So in this ayah, Allah is telling us many things. One of the more important things that we have to focus, number one, the door of tawbah is open for every one of us. We can repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at any time. And he is the one also takes the sadaqat. Of course, sadaqah comes in a form of uh, money. Sadaqah comes in a form of food. Sadaqah comes in a form of giving a blanket to a homeless person in, the, in, the, uh, winter, uh, in, in a winter. Or any, any good action that you will do towards other, it's considered as sadaqah. And Allah will accept that. And Allah is assuring, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a tawab, the one who makes the tawbah, accept the tawbah, uh, accept people when they return back. And he is the most merciful. From the other side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what? In Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, ayah number 276, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيُمْحُقُ اللَّهُ رِبَا وَيُرْبِ الصَّدَقَاتِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ Allah Almighty said, Allah will destroy the riba, destroy the you know, usury interest, when, when people work and, and deal with the interest and the usury. And Allah increase, Allah grows the sadaqat. So imagine there are two things. Allah dislike and hate those who are dealing with money and taking extra money and extra benefits and extra uh, usury and, and profit. So Allah does not like that, even though a human nature is, yes, that's good. I give this person $100, he will return me 110 or 120 or 150. I will give this person give this person 1,000 and I will get it back 1,500. So the person will feel, yeah, it's a good money, it's a good business. But Allah destroys it. 
Not necessarily that the person who is having the money, the money will be destroyed. The person will get destroyed. The person's happiness will get destroyed. The person's family, the person's children, the person's peace of mind will be destroyed by Allah Almighty. So this is a sign from Allah that don't deal with usury even between yourself, between the person to person, or between you and the uh, the, the banks or, or the financial institution, those who are encouraging people to come take now whatever you want, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, and you pay later. And unfortunately, many people, Muslims, I'm talking about Muslims, they do it for, for X, Y, Z reason, but this is not something right. And Allah Almighty says, Allah destroys the usury. Allah destroys the riba. And Allah grow and Allah increase the sadaqat when you give in a way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you give for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you give for the masjid when you give for the da'wah when you give for sake of you know community society whatsoever Allah will grow that money imagine you are giving one but Allah is not taking it as one Allah is taking it minimum as 10 Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in a hadith that one deed is equal to 10. So if you are giving $1, in fact, you are giving at the beginning. This is just the beginning. If you are giving $1, no, you are eventually giving in, in the hand of Allah Almighty $10. And Allah says, that Allah will multiply that one into 10 into 700. Allahu Akbar. Look at this investment. Wallahi, I swear by Allah that not a single institute, bank, financial uh, you know industry will not going to give you this much of profit for 1 to 10 and from 10 to 700 allahu akbar look at this wonderful investment with allah almighty and then he will increase it more and double and double of the double and this is what when you only give one dollar for the sake of Allah Almighty. Ten dollars for the sake of Allah Almighty. Allah will increase that. And you will see this huge amount and huge investment of yours on the day of judgment in your Jannah. Can you imagine? So this is what Allah Almighty says. sadaqat, And he grows and he increased the sadaqat. And not only that, I can go on and on and on with the, with the ayat. Because mashallah, Quran is full with these ayat. But I'll just, inshallah, Maybe stay one or two, and then we'll come to the also some other incidents. Allah Almighty said what? Talking to the Muslims. Aminu billahi wa rasulihi in Surah Al-Hadid in the chapter 87, ayah number 7. Allah is saying, Aminu billahi wa rasulihi wa anfiqu mimma ja'alakum mustakhlafina fil ard. Now, this is also something very important. Alhamdulillah, we as the Muslims, you know, we, we, we say we are Muslims. We say we are believers. That is the one step higher than Muslims, you know, that you are practicing, you are doing things. Then we follow the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his instructions and his commandments. Now, my brothers and sisters, if you are doing all that, Allah is telling us something very important in Surah Al-Hadid. In the chapter of Hadid, what is saying? Number one, you have to believe. Alhamdulillah, we are believing in Allah Almighty. But Allah is confirming that believe in Allah. Believe, number one, then in Allah, then Rasulihi. This is the first things you have to do. Now, I have no doubt those, my brothers sitting in front of me and, and, and those who are listening to me, Alhamdulillah, we all have believed in Allah. We all have believed in Rasulullah. In fact, we get angry when, when someone goes against Allah and against Rasulullah and whoever does anything against Islam. Yes, we, we get, you know, feel bad and we feel angry and jealous. That's, that's one of the signs of the Iman. But what Allah made you among those who are the successors? Who are the successors? For those who have believed among you and spent. Spent in a cause of Allah Almighty. Why? Because you are the successors. We are the successors of what? There is number one prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to give da'wah to the people. People accepted Islam. Then sahaba went all the way around the world and giving da'wah. Now there is no sahaba anymore and there are no prophets sallallahu alayhi wasallam anymore. So we are mustakhlifin, we are the successors to carry out this deen with our akhlaq, 
with our manners, with our character, with our dealing with people, you are a Muslim. Before get involving in da'wah and going and doing a street da'wah by yourself, you are the ambassador of Islam, you are the ambassador of Rasulullah sallallahu you are the ambassador of the Sahaba, my brothers and sisters. So, number one, believing in Allah, believing in Rasulullah, and giving charity and helping the community and the society because Allah made you the successor of those who have believed and those who went before us, Rasulullah and the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the other people. So this is also very, very important point, my brothers and sisters. Now, coming to some, some uh, hadith. Now, That if I have, let's say, ten dollar dinar, whatever, if I have ten, and if I take one out of this ten and I will give, what the logic says? The logic says from ten, one become, you know, your minus one. So they are now Almighty. Many people think like that. And I know there are people, subhanAllah, they have they have maybe a little bit difficulties of giving or a little bit difficulties of spending in the cause of Allah or putting it in the box of charity or the donation box or here and there. I know that's, that's something human nature, but it is highly recommended, my brothers and sisters, to give for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because number one, it melts the heart. The charity, sadaqah that you give for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that one dollar, one yen, one dinar that you will gonna go and put inside the box, the charity box, sincerely, this will melt your heart. This will make you feel more towards your brothers and sisters uh, around the world. And the Prophet says, Ma naqasa malu sadaqah. That it's not when you spend, your money is decreasing. No, this is the human mentality. This is the human logic, but this is not the logic with Allah Almighty. When you give, it is increasing. The Prophet ﷺ says, Ma naqasa malu sadaqa. The money that you're giving as a sadaqa is never reduced. And I'll give you an authentic hadith by Aisha radiallahu anha uh, that she one day slaughter an animal and she cut the animal into pieces and, and, and to keep them in the bags. And she said to the servant that go give everything to the poor people. That alhamdulillah many people do in, in, in different countries. Now imagine the Prophet wasallam. he used to love the shoulder. The shoulder of the, the sheep or the cow or the camel, whatever. So she said, because she loves Prophet Sallallahu a lot, and the Prophet Sallallahu loves Aisha radiallahu anha a lot. So this is something between husband and wife and increasing the love. She said, you know what? I'll keep the shoulder. I'll keep the shoulder and I'll cook it and I'll give it to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But everything else, I will give it as a sadaqah. So she gave everything sadaqah. And then when the Prophet ﷺ came, the Prophet ﷺ, she pre pre prepared the food for the Prophet Sallam, everything, all everything is good. When the Prophet ﷺ came, so she gave the food and she said, Baqiya, that Ya Rasulullah, I gave sadaqah for everything, and what is left is only the shoulder, because you love the shoulder. Now you got the point? She is discussing with her husband, Rasulullah, that Ya Rasulullah, I give everything except shoulder. Look at the answer that came from Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, La Ya Aisha. No, 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 Ya Aisha. No, this is not actually everything is there except the shoulder, which means everything is there in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Jannah and it's getting more and more as a reward except what we are eating. That is the Shoulder, even though eating is halal, eating from the same uh, uh, meat, it's no problem with it. But look what the Prophet is teaching us, that yes, what you are keeping with you, it's not that you saved it. No, 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 no. What is saved is what you gave. What you already gave to the people, they are benefiting from it. It is the one who saved on the day of judgment, in the Qiyamah, in the Jannah. But what we are eating, <laughs> that actually we 
they are consuming it. So this is what we have to think as a Muslims, as a believer, that this is the real investment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll come now, I finished with the ayat, I finished with one incident of the hadith. I'll give you one recent incident, one recent incident that happened with you know people living nowadays. One person, his name is Abu Muhammad. Now, Abu Muhammad is the, is the uh, person's name. His son's name is Muhammad. In Arab country, they call someone Abu so-and-so. So, so if my, my son's name is, uh, for example, Abdullah, the people will call me, instead of calling me Muhammad or Sheikh Muhammad and all these names, they will call me simply Abu Abdullah. You know, so this is a normal thing we, we, we have uh, in an Arab uh, country. Uh, as Prophet Sallam, he used to uh, call himself and people used to call him Abu Al-Qasim or Abu Al-Qasim. So because his son was Al-Qasim. But anyways, coming back to the topic as the time is limited. So Abu Muhammad, one day he bought a sheep. He took the sheep at home. Now everyone knows, mashallah, this happens even, mashallah, I believe. I don't know in Japan if it's happening, but I saw a lot of videos in Pakistan and India that, you know, you, you tie a cow, you tie a camel, you tie a sheep, and then, the, you know, the sheep try to run away and people are running behind it, holding the knives, and, and it looks like a dramatical thing. But anyways, this happened with Abu Muhammad. Abu Muhammad took a sheep, he tied it up in his house. The second day, for some reason, the uh, sheep ran away and Abu Muhammad behind him running, running, and the sheep is going in the, the streets and Abu Muhammad, what happened in few streets, in one of the houses, there is a lady staying and she is a widow. She is having all the kids and they are yatim. All the kids are yatim, no father. The mother is not working and she is in a very uh, poor condition. And usually people used to come and keep some food at the home. They keep the food, they knock the door and they leave. So she, the lady opens the door, whatever she finds, she takes in. Now, amazingly, this sheep is running, 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 running. And from one street to another street to third street, he saw the, the door of that woman is open and he went inside that door. So the woman got scared, like, you know, where the sheep came from. So she went outside and she saw who? Abu Muhammad. And everyone knows each other. And Abu Muhammad is tired. <laughs> he's, he's just because he's behind this uh, sheep. So she thought that Abu Muhammad carried the sheep and he gave the sheep to this lady. So now Abu Muhammad is looking at the lady. The lady is looking at Abu Muhammad and they don't know what's going on. So lady said, Jazakallah khair, may Allah reward you. Jazakallah khair, you know, our children are very happy. They didn't eat meat from a long time. Thank you very much. And the poor guy, he doesn't know what to say. So he said, okay, okay, may Allah bless you. May Allah accept it from you. And he just turned his back and he looked at the sky and he says, Ya Allah, accept it from me. Ya Allah, just accept it from me. So, and he left, khalas. He, he made the niyyah that it's it's sadaqah and he left it. Subhanallah, he said, khalas, what I can do? Next day, I will go and buy. The second day, the second day, and by the way, it was a small sheep. It was not any very, very big. It was just a small sheep that he, he could afford. The next day, he said, let me go and buy some, some something else. So the next day, he went out and he saw a person selling the sheep and the, you know, the goats. So he went. And he started looking, he said, how much is this? How much is this? So the guy said, the one who's selling, he said, you know what? Take the best out of it. And inshallah, we will, we will not uh, argue too much or bargain too much about the money. So Abu Muhammad trying looking left and right. And he saw a little big one, mashallah, healthy, chubby uh, sheep. And he took one and he said, tell me how much? He says, put it in the car and then come and talk to me. So he said, okay. He went and he kept it in the car. He came back and he says, how much? So the guy, the one who's selling, he said, see, Allah blessed me with lots of lots of sheep this season, this year. And I promised Allah that today only, the first guy coming and buying from me, I will give him as a hadiyah. I will give him as a, what? Gift. So this is a gift from you. So you take this and you take your own money. I don't need anything from you. So he, you know, got astonished and he thanked Allah Almighty. So what happened? He saved his money. Allah gave him something better than what he gave from a small sheep. Allah, you know, gave him something big and uh, really big. And of course, if I keep continue and telling you, my brothers and sisters, their stories, their stories are endless. I have less than maybe 10 minutes now, but their stories are endless stories. 
So there are there are many many uh, things I can share with you, but last not least, a story of a person who was sick, and he was going through cancer. And everyone knows cancer. May Allah Almighty protect us from this uh, horrible disease and and uh, severe disease, and all the Muslim and and non Muslims from this uh, severe disease. So one man was having that, and the doctor says, "See, you know what." You have to, this happened in the Arab country, and the people says you have to go to, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Germany or some other country to do your to do your uh, chemotherapy, but the chances is really, really less. So the man said, okay, if this is the case, if this is the case, I will, I will do it. So before leaving, what he did, one day he was going and visiting his friends and everyone, because he knows that if he goes, uh, to to uh, that country and get the treatment, he might not come back. And khalas, this is the last moment that he is living, the few months only. So he is going and meeting all his friends in one of the places he went and he met his friend. So while he is talking outside in a in a in a coffee shop, his to his friend, he saw one old lady, one old lady. She is picking up bones and fat from the butcher's shop. So he looked at that lady, what she is doing, she's taking the bones from outside from the garbage and she is taking the fat. So she went, uh, after after uh, the brother finished with, with the meeting, he went all the way immediately to that lady and he says, uh, oh auntie, uh, why are you doing this? I saw you picking up some bones and, and some uh, fat. So she said, I'm a poor, I have no family, I have no husband, I have small children, kids, and I want to feed them and we only eat meat in Eid. That's it. So right now I'm just taking the bone and the fat and boiling it. So at least they will taste taste the food by, by smelling it only. Can you imagine tasting the food just by smelling the smell of the, uh, the meat? So the man said, come, come, come inside. He went inside the butcher shop and he said, see, do you know this lady? He said, yeah, we know this lady. She, she is uh, living nearby. He said, see. Every week she will come and you will give her three to five kg of meat. And here's the money for the next year. So from now until the next year, here's the money. Let her get the best of the meat. And without you asking her any money, this is the money I'm paying you for the entire year. And he said this to the lady. So the lady immediately started crying and she he start uttering things that he couldn't understand. And he said, may Allah bless you. May Allah give you this and may Allah give you that. She, he said, just Alhamdulillah, I just help you for the sake of Allah and I'm leaving. This man, after just going from the butcher shop or from the place where he was all the way to his house, he knocked the door. The daughter opens the door. And this is literally what happened. I'm telling you, this is a true story. The daughter opens the door and looks at the father's face and she's saying, father, What's, what's wrong with your face? What, what happened to your face? So the, daughter, uh, the father says, what, what's wrong with my face? Uh, is there anything there? She said, no, you, your face is glowing. Just there's some like, light in your face. He said, Allahu Alam, I don't know. Then after a few days, after doing the goodbye thing with all the family, he left all the way to that country before getting into the operation and starting the chemotherapy, they did the final tests. And when the result came, the doctor was astonished. The doctor says, I ask you, and you have to be very honest with me, what medicine you took behind me? Or before I tell you, before I give you any, any prescription, which medicine is this? He said, what medicine? He says, no, I can see in your report there is nothing called cancer. Allahu Akbar, from, patient, uh, from the patient of cancer who is just about to go through the chemotherapy, after a few weeks, he is going back and doing the checkup. And in the report, there is not a single sign of what? The disease, the cancer. And he says, Wallahi, I didn't take any medicine. I, I swear by Allah, I didn't take anything, but I think it's all from Allah Almighty. So see, even the Prophet ﷺ says, Dawu marwakum bis sadaqah. Make your own disease sick people come back to the normal status with what? With sadaqah. So even if you have people sick at home, you have your sick mom, sick dad, sick father, wife, whosoever, may Allah protect you all. And we are not asking for any diseases. But just in case, if anyone goes through that, 
the best option is to give sadaqah, get closer to Allah by sadaqah and make the intention in your heart that I'm giving sadaqah in order to cure my son, in order to cure my mom, in order to cure so and so. So by that, you will get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And believe me, never ever think that the sadaqah will in increase your money. In fact, it will increase your money. And Jazakumullah khair, I have a lot of things to say, but as, as we know, we are restricted with the time. So I will just give next five uh, to 10 minutes, as uh, the brothers said to the brothers and sisters, if you have any questions, and inshallah ta'ala, we will, we will go through it. And even my brothers and sisters, if you have any comments, any incident, anything to share, inshallah ta'ala, now it's your time. Barakallahu fi. Jazakumullah khair, Shaykh, we have uh, five minutes left because of some technical issue that will be stopped abruptly we have five minutes so if any brothers have any questions uh... yeah fine, fine. Uh, it seems every... basically if my brothers are not asking any questions it has only two meaning one that I was, I was very clear, very, very clear in my talk.